Hi folks, TGIFF. Uh, this is a pretty cool design that one of our viewers, Rick, sent in new to Fusion and said, John, I'm having a really hard time getting this fire pit done correctly in Fusion. I want to plaza it out and I want these rings that he modeled to be cut out of the brackets so that this thing will sort of go together like a jigsaw puzzle and he can weld it in place. So perfect example. So uh, Rick, nice job on this. I am going to pick on you a little. It's the single biggest thing I see folks do. Uh, you need to be working in a component. What you've done, totally not your fault because it, frankly it's not that intuitive, but you've got every one of these little things as a bracket, or excuse me, a, a, a body. And the first thing you need to do when you start something in Fusion is right click, new component, and you know call it a bracket or whatever your part is. Inside of this component would live your body and your sketch. Really important when it comes to cam and joints and so forth. So um, we'll be okay here, but I just want to emphasize that. So the process of doing this is actually pretty simple. We're going to go to Modify, Combine. Ironically, it's not a combine at all. It's the exact opposite. But when I click Combine, I get this pop-up window. And the first thing it says is target body. So target body is kind of like, I don't know, think about like, what are you shooting at? Well, I want to affect, I want to hit this thing right here. What's the tool body? Again, tool is sort of what you do with something. Like, so what's the tool? What's the object that you're using to perform the action? Well, I want this thing to be the tool. It defaults to a cut, which is perfect. You could also do join them together into one body or just create the intersection, which would give you this little tab thing right there cuts what we want, and I want to keep the tool. If you didn't check that, this ring would actually disappear. So if I click OK, it doesn't look any different, but if I expand my bodies over here on the left side, and I click once on this ring, actually, I don't even know if I have to. I just hover over it. I can see, see how body 24 is getting highlighted? That tells me that's body 24. So I can turn the light bulb off and Voila, that's exactly, I think, what Rick wanted. Actually, we do have a little bit of a problem. We'll come back to that. Now, there's a bunch of these rings, so here's what I'm going to do. If you hit the S key on your keyboard, you get this little quick pop-up window, and in it you can type things like combine, or you could type in extrude. And it's super helpful for sometimes because I could do things like for revolve. I can hit S, R, E, V, and I'm instantly in a revolve. And you guys know I like to work pretty fast. S combine isn't super easy to type, like, you know, to do this a bunch, but if I hover over combine, see the little right up arrow over here? Add it to the toolbox. It adds it right here. So now I can pretty quickly hit S, click here, boom, boom, OK. Click on this one, oops, this, to hide it. Ooh, didn't work. Let's try it again. Click on this as my body. That's my tool, cut, keep tools, click OK, hide it. That's interesting. Let me try this again. I was actually getting a glitch on this earlier when I was practicing for this video. Hmm. Try, try it again here. Combine, tool, target body, tool body, keep the tool, click OK. Now let's hide this. There we go. So I think that was actually my fault. I think I did it in the opposite order, which meant I took the, took a little chunk out of the ring and not the chunk out of the body. So let's keep going. In fact, we'll fast forward through the rest of these. Okay, and just a few more down here. We'll make sure we do the same one. It is this one, okay. So now I've got one bracket, which has got all my things notches in it, except each one is a little bit incorrect. So here's how I'm going to handle that, and I'm curious to see there might well be a better way. Take a look. Right now, the origin is off. I'm going to turn that light bulb back on, 
That way I can see the planes. And you know what? I just realized that it's okay. Um, but this origin, I don't have a, the uh, bracket here that I happen to pick isn't in line with any of my origin planes. So again, no big deal. I'll turn that back off because it's not going to be helpful. So new component. And I'm going to call this master bracket. So see how it's activated with the radio button here? I'm now working in a component. I'm going to hit P for project. And if you've never used the project command, just sit tight and watch, and I think you'll understand. So P, it's going to say, select a plane or planar face. I'm going to sketch on the plane that is this bracket, because here's what we're going to do. We're going to duplicate this bracket, but we're not going to mess with the first one. We're going to basically use a new bracket. And again, there might be other ways to do this, but I like this way. So I clicked once, which again started a sketch on that same plane, but we're not on, we're just using the same plane. We're not actually messing with this bracket. And so I've in this project command, and if I click here once, take a look. We get this purple sketch with all of these little lines. So I'm done with my project, click OK. And now this bodies here that uh, Rick had, I'm going to click on the light bulb and turn all of those bodies off, which just leaves me with the master bracket sketch that we created. And right now, all that it has is one sketch. I'm going to edit that sketch by right click. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm already in the sketch. I just I stand back. So the, fa the reason it's purple is, uh, so what we did is we projected that geometry onto a new part a new thing and it's purple because it's linked back so if we changed one of the Rick's original thing it would update here well I don't want it linked back I want to manipulate this so I'm gonna drag a big box around it which selects everything right click and say break link now this stuff's all gonna be blue exactly what I want um, I'm gonna orient it to Can I do that yeah click on the thing and click this little look at icon down here in the top sort of bottom center of your screen gives me a nice oriented view to it this is really cool folks now you can del start deleting some stuff to clean it up um, and so for on this one I'm going to go to sketch extend take a look hover over right here Oop. there we go I guess if you click the two lines, it extends. It stays active too. Oops. Of course, this extend. There we go. So I'll come back and trim them in a second. All I want to do right now is keep clicking here to get them to extend over. So freaking cool. To me, at least. Huh. I must be doing something wrong because you would think, there it goes. Um, it seems a little bit inconsistent when it works perfectly and when it's a little fussy here. Those will work great. Somebody tell me why I'm not doing this right. In the comments below, please, that would be so everyone can see what I'm goofing on here. Uh, what else? These guys, just two down here. Super sensitive. That's weird. Some of them are. Some of them work right away. There we go. Oh, there we go. Maybe that's why. I didn't notice that. It's got two little lines there. Ooh, tricky. So let's actually hit T for trim. Delete that one. Now, if I go back to extend. There we go. We'll go back and look at that other one. I bet you that's what it was doing. Yeah, look at that, huh? T for trim. Get rid of that first one. Uh, sketch, extend. Boom. Yep. Look at that. Weird. So let's start over on this one here. Oh, good heavens.
Okay, well this one just doesn't want to cooperate. L for line, we'll just snap a line over here. Now I can hit T for trim. And you can trim away all this excess. Aside from that goofy one, it's normally pretty quick because you'll hit one, two, and you get your slot. One, two. And I can hit E for extrude, click on it, and we'll just say two millimeters. And now I've got my plasma cut part. Uh, do you guys want to see more? If so, let me know. Maybe we'll do this follow-up video showing how we would recreate this now using a little bit more, uh, I think, correct use of some Fusion 360 revolves and components and so forth. Otherwise, folks, take care. Thank you for the thumbs up in the comments. If you enjoy this type of stuff, we appreciate you supporting our Patreon page. There's as little as a buck a month, and it helps us uh, take the time to produce these videos. Otherwise, see you next Friday.